Hey guys, real quick, I just wanted to give you a quick little rundown of what's going on here. So basically, um, if you don't know it already, I come from my YouTube channel, it's just called Divi. I do gaming content there, I do memes, uh, a lot of Danganronpa stuff, a lot of fighting game stuff. It's kind of a mix, but it's mostly gaming and a little bit of anime. Um, I thought I was really wanting to do uh, Pokemon trading card game videos, and I wanted to do more than what would be appropriate for that channel. I think it would be really awkward to mix it in. I'd have a really divided demographic, so I want to try and make a separate channel, um, which is the channel that you're on right now um, for my TCG videos. So if it goes well, if you guys like the videos and I like it making them, um, I'll keep going. If not, we can forget about this. It's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, that's why there's a new channel. Otherwise, let's get right into it. I've been fiending Celestial Storm deck building. Like I've been just making deck after deck after deck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make videos on my deck ideas. These are going to be like kind of rough drafts. They aren't going to be exact deck numbers. They're going to be ideas. Um, maybe I can get feedback from you guys. Um, and I'll just keep posting ideas and the ones I end up building I'll do full deck profiles for and I might pit them against each other um, get some friends to record some matches with me I do believe I have a professional ca camera somewhere in my house I have to find it it's kind of old but it's still professional so might be able to get some tabletop games and I'll definitely get some TCG online games with uh, uh, the deck profiles and the matches so for now, this is just a rough draft, uh, no exact numbers, We're just, I'm just coming up with a big idea that I want to make happen. So this is going to be a Rayquaza GX Shining Genesect deck. Now we're looking at Rayquaza GX, why did I pick this card? One, it's new. <laughs> Two, uh, it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, it, it's very similar to Tapu Bulu and it's often paired with Tapu Bulu. However, I think it's a better attacker than Tapu Bulu because it hits higher benchmarks than Tapu Bulu. Uh, like what he's capable of and that is because your damage is based off the amount of energy that all your Pokemon have in total so we can go through the benchmarks real quick but uh, before we do that I just want to say um, has 180 hit points that's pretty good I guess it's basic GX so I mean what do you expect its ability is actually pretty decent um, helps accelerate energy as long as you discard three cards in the top of your deck during your turn you're going to be able to take a um basic energy from your discard pile and put it on to rayquaza so it's better if you do it while you know there's a basic energy in the discard pile rather than taking a shot in the dark but oh well it's, it's a it's a pretty good ability um it's gx attack is only one grass energy which is fuego and it's just a glorified sycamore you discard your entire hand draw 10 cards that's actually fantastic and if you need a quick really big setup that's the way to do it and uh, it's just a good card so let's go over the benchmarks real quick for energy in total on all your pokemon you're doing 120 damage it's not hard to achieve at all you're probably getting two or three energy per turn i'll show you how this deck works in a little bit um, but it's easy to achieve 120 damage um, so you're okoing the new Deoxys attack that's out, so you're okoing a lot of the baby stuff, um, like all the baby Pokemons, and you're KOing like a Rangaroo, so that's definitely very much wanted. Um, 180 for 6 energy, a little bit more energy, but you're hitting that uh, one of the main benchmarks. Unfortunately, 10 away from Boozwell GX, but you're hitting uh, Lele GX, um, other Rayquaza GX, so that's a, that's a good benchmark. Um, 210 for 7 energy, that's pretty much the highest you're probably going to get. Um, 210 damage is a lot. It's going to knock out a lot of the stage 1s, most of the stage 1s. And then if you add one more energy, you're going to get the pretty much best number you're probably going to hit, which is 240. Um, that's going to one-shot a lot, like I think pretty much everything. I, I can't really think of anything that's more than 240 hp at the moment um so the secondary attacker before i go on to showing you how i accelerate rayquaza i'm going to show you the secondary attacker which is 
Shining Genesect. This thing came out in Shining Legends, obviously. I chose this because it's a grass type uh, with a really strong attack that can use the grass energy that Rayquaza needs, so it's pretty nice. Um, 130 HP and it's basic, that is phenomenal, especially for not being a GX, which means you can't use choice bands to kill this thing or to get to a higher number to kill this thing, so you're surviving naturally a Galissapod first impression. That's fantastic. Um, your abilities energy reload which i really like in this deck it kind of helps preserve your energies if you need it uh specifically your grass ones so if you have a bench sitter with grass energies on it that you just put to put damage on your quasi you want it better use out of it you can move it to genesect so if you got any dead weight energies just move it to genesect out of that damage um another use could be like if your rayquaza is beaten to hell and uh, he's probably gonna die he's sitting on your bench for no reason instead of letting you lose those energies to like a tapu coco spreading damage out on the bench uh you can move it to genesect real quick and keep an energy so you're keeping that damage for rayquaza as well as adding up damage for giant genesect so your uh move is gaia blaster 50 damage plus 20 more times the amount of grass energy attached to this pokemon unfortunately you're realistically getting tops three energy on this thing which is only 110 damage um, which is unfortunate. You are missing a lot by not getting that 120. However, I did think of a way to make this a lot better. Um, two ways actually, but I'll show you the main way. And that is by putting Fighting Fury Belts in your deck. I think you should have four Fighting Fury Belts. They work on both Rayquaza GX and Shining Genesect because they're basic Pokemon. So basically this is gonna allow you to hit um, much needed benchmarks. Genesect is going to be able to KO Hoopa Unbound with one shot at three energy. That is fantastic. Um, Rayquaza KOs Boozwall at six energy rather than having to build up the seven, which is also very nice. All while making them 40 HP tankier, meaning Genesect with 150 HP is kind of disgusting for uh, being a basic with... Uh, not being a GX, so, you know, choice bands aren't hitting that. There's not much that's killing that. Um, probably just really ridiculous attacks like Knuckle Impact or uh, Fire Pokemon that have weakness on it. So that makes it a bit more beefier, but the main thing is Rayquaza gets past a lot of annoying benchmarks. Um, it gets 220 HP, so it misses the 210 benchmark. It uh, misses all the 180 uh, benchmarks and um, things that are meant to KO Boozwell with exactly 190 damage. They aren't going to kill Rayquaza as well. And uh, Rayquaza has a weakness to Fairy, so... Uh, I think that's really the only thing that's gonna i think like gardevoir gx would just murder it but i think it lives the dene with a fighting fury belt if i'm not wrong i forget what the dene does but i heard somebody tell me that the dene can one shot requaza gx so that's pretty cool um the way we're gonna accelerate this the main method is vika volts uh vika volts we all know what he does strong charge you get a grass and electric energy f uh from your deck and you just put them on any pokemon any way you like this is really nice since we need both an electric and a grass energy for Rayquaza. You have one of this, you get a Rayquaza set up in one turn. Um, a lot of people say it's clunky and they don't put it in Rayquaza GX decks. They think Rayquaza is better off on his own, but I think it's the most consistent way, even though it's a stage two, it's a very consistent way to make sure you're at least getting two energies per turn because you're damage scales to your amount of energies on your Pokemon for both of your Pokemon. So it's very much just welcome in a deck like that so basically you're getting two energies per turn uh this gives you a 60 damage like plus per turn for rayquaza gx and you also get 20 damage extra per turn for genesect um if you put the grass energies on genesect and even if you do put the grass energies on genesect one grass energy on genesect is still 30 extra damage for rayquaza which is really nice so i i like it in this deck it's consistent you can choose rather to want the <laughs> can't speak english whether to run 212 or 323 three with Vika Volt. It depends how much you need them. You definitely need two in your deck. You can't run a 1-1 one, one or 1-1-1 one, one, one or something crazy like that. Um, it's it's for consistency reasons. And um, one big flaw with Rayquaza GX is when they start getting knocked out, the damage starts getting low and it's hard to pick yourself back up. So this guy kind of makes sure you keep, your, keep on your feet. Um, however, there is a second way we're going to accelerate this. This is 
the uh, last way you accelerate it, we're putting a what I would probably do is a 1-1 of uh, Venusaur and Bulbasaur since we're most likely running four rare candies. This is not something you're going to get every game, but I will go through my reasons of why I like having the 1-1 in this deck, why I think it's worth the deck space. So basically for two energies, you're just slamming Hoopa Unbound with Genesect. Two energies hits that 130 benchmark that you needed to get a fighting fury belt to kill um hoopa unbound so you don't even need that anymore um other than like tankiness you can focus on giving that to rayquaza that's super nice all while doubling grass energy is worth meaning that it only takes three grass energies to get rayquaza up to 180 damage that is gnarly and you're gonna have fighting fury belt on too so that's 190 for three grass energies and you're already gonna have the electric energy on there so you're already there it's i just see too many good things out of this card and we don't have a lot um on the bench other than vika volts genesex and rayquazas so i think it, it can definitely fit i don't think you'll get it every game I just think you should definitely put it in. You could totally run just a lot more Vika Volt than having Venusaur in the deck at all, but I think Venusaur just has a really nice ability and you're running for rare candies. I don't see why not run 1-1 one, one Venusaur, Bulbasaur. So that's my reasoning. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but it's just something I think would be really nice with the deck. Um, that being said, don't rely on it. Now next we're gonna have Tapu Lele GX. I put like two in the deck, maybe three, probably just two. Um, basically, you know the gist, you get an Ultra Ball, search it out, put it on your bench. You get a turn one Bridget. Yes, you should play Bridget with this deck because you're gonna be evolving Pokemon and your Rayquaza and your Genesect, which are main attackers, will be put on the bench. And this thing, remember, um, you can put GX's on the bench along with the regular ones because it's only EX's that uh, you can only have one of on the bench so yeah very good card very good combo um, that's your most reliable turn one setup now your last Pokemon you're putting in your deck is one Latios Prism Star rules with Prism Star is they get discarded uh, when they get discarded you can't get them back because they're in the lost zone and you can only have one of them in your deck but this is just extra energy acceleration for one colorless energy so any of your grass or electric energy you do a little bit of poke 30 damage and you can move your uh discarded energy to your basic dragons which are your quasi gx so it's another option of building up your clauses faster if they need a little breather to recover you can wall off you're all, they're only taking one prize card for Knocking out Latios, even though it's going to the Lost Zone and whatnot. Um, and it's also a good way to get your energies back if you're constantly losing your energies due to Team Flare Grunt shenanigans and um, just dying in general. So, yeah. Anyways, that's uh, the basics of the idea of the Rayquaza GX Shining Genesect deck that I kind of came up with. I will have kind of uh, my guesstimate on what I want to uh, test with, like numbers-wise in the deck in the description below in a paste bin if you want to see it and test out the deck otherwise feel free to put whatever you want in the deck and see what works uh there's still a lot of questions i have the issue i have with this deck at the moment or this deck idea is numbers are really tight because i have a lot of pokemon in this deck um i understand that that's not always the best thing for a deck but i really think this has a lot of potential because you're fighting a lot of the meta like you're hitting those benchmarks and Genesect is taking care of that stupid Hoopa Unbound that keeps getting top 8 and stuff for literally no reason other than it's immune to GX's. So yeah, I think it's a good deck. Definitely try it. Um, and there's a lot of other ways you can set up Rayquaza too. Um, you could have Ultra Beasts instead and um, use a baby Ultra Beast uh, to hit Hoopa Unbound rather than Genesect and use beast rings and then use energy transfer to get the energies to Rayquaza but I don't like that idea because it relies on one of your GX's being knocked out so you can have those um 
your opponent can have four prize cards so you can set up beast rings and a lot of the baby ultra beasts need your prize cards to be exact to do anything uh, and a lot of the ultra beasts GX's uh, the only good one is really Zerkatree GX and uh, Faramosa GX's they're both kind of niche you know so you don't really have a solid secondary attacker you just have a bunch of niches uh, in one deck and I think that's a mess so I think this is probably one of the strongest ways to run Rayquaza GX if you're looking for just pure consistency you're probably just gonna want to run your basic Latias Prism Star Rayquaza GX Tapu Lele GX deck um, you know without anything special but this is the way that hits the hardest in my opinion so if you enjoyed the video please give a like leave a comment down below on like changes you'd make to this um or like your deck numbers just any input you have on this deck do you think it's a good deck idea do you think it's garbage it won't hurt my feelings i <laughs> it's okay um and if you want to see more deck ideas deck builds and matches please consider subscribing. Anyways, I will see you next time. Have a good one.